Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, a recent study from the University of Kentucky finds there have been an uptick in overdose deaths among one group of Kentuckians. And President Biden visits Baltimore to assess damage following the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Plus, protect those plants as freezing lows are likely overnight. Your forecast on the way is Mountain News at 5.30 starts right now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Olivia Calfi. President Biden visited Baltimore Friday to get a first-hand look at the damage from the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge and meet with the people impacted by the collapse the most. CBS's Chris Van Cleve has more details from Baltimore. President Biden met with family members of the six construction workers killed when a cargo ship hit the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore last week, causing its collapse. After pulling a night shift fixing potholes, they were on a break when the ship struck. Earlier, the president flew over the wreckage in Marine One and got a briefing on the recovery efforts. You know, from the air, I saw the bridge that's been ripped apart. But here on the ground, I see a community that's been pulled together. The Biden administration sent a letter to Congress Friday, formally requesting lawmakers authorize 100 percent of the costs to rebuild the bridge. The federal government did the same during previous incidents, including 2007's I-35 bridge collapse in Minneapolis. And we're going to get this paid for, aren't we? Yes. 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 All right. The conservative House Freedom Caucus released a statement saying it will agree to the spending, but with conditions. It wants the money offset with cuts to other areas of the budget. Backers expect the measure to win bipartisan support. As the work gets underway to reopen the channel and rebuild the bridge, carry out an investigation, and Transportation Infrastructure Committee will closely monitor developments and work with the families and stakeholders impacted. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says the Democratic-led Senate will quickly move to vote on a funding request to rebuild the bridge. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Baltimore. The Baltimore Orioles and Baltimore Ravens, the city's Major League Baseball and NFL teams announced they are donating $5 million each to the Key Bridge Emergency Fund, which provides support for families, port workers, first responders, and small businesses impacted by the bridge collapse. The Biden administration says a new grant program will help make clean energy products more affordable. The Environmental Protection Agency announced they are releasing $20 billion aimed at clean energy projects. Most of that money will go toward building a network of community finance institutions referred to as green banks that will seek to provide upfront costs for people to invest in energy efficient projects. It's going to mobilize another $150 billion in private sector investment to set up the nation's first ever national network to finance clean energy upgrades and retrofits in homes, in schools, in churches, places of worship. Uh, this is a really big deal. The money comes from the Inflation Reduction Act passed in 2022. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is in China this week with the goal of discussing economic challenges and further stabilizing ties. One topic that was addressed was the oversupply of Chinese goods such as electric vehicles and solar panels. Biden administration officials have suggested raising tariffs on Chinese imports to help reduce trade tensions. Former President Trump has claimed he would impose 60 percent tariffs on imports if he is reelected. Representative Lauren Boebert's behavior is once again raising eyebrows. Back in December, the Colorado Republican attended a gala headlined by former President Donald Trump in New York. Multiple witnesses say she appeared drunk and kept attempting to snap selfies with Trump. Eventually, they say Trump's security detail stepped in and asked her to stop. Boebert's allies say Trump wasn't bothered by the incident since he endorsed her last month. A former Trump attorney is asking a judge to reinstate his law license. John Eastman's law license was deactivated last week after a judge ruled he should be disbarred over his actions for leading some of former President Donald Trump's efforts to challenge the 2020 election. The California Supreme Court will ultimately decide 
whether to endorse or reject the punishment. But in the meantime, Eastman is unable to practice law. Former First Lady Melania Trump will appear at a fundraiser for the Log Cabin Republicans, which represents LGBTQ conservatives. It will take place April 20th at Mar-a-Lago. Melania has taken part in events with the Log Cabin Republicans since leaving the White House. In 2021, she was the guest of honor at the group's annual Spirit of Lincoln Gala. For the most part, Melania Trump has stayed off the campaign trail this year, but recently teased a return to campaigning. A federal jury has ruled reality television star Todd Chrisley slandered a Georgia Department of Revenue investigator. The panel awarded Amy Daughtery Hines $755,000 in damages. According to a legal filing, she accused Chrisley of launching a social media campaign against the department as they investigated Chrisley for financial crimes. She said he accused her of multiple crimes and wrongdoing. Well, it's Friday, but the weather is not great to close out the work week. We are gloomy, also soggy and chilly across the region. Up on first alert, pinpoint Doppler watching out for a few hit or miss rain showers as we go into this evening, zooming into a few showers, pushing close to Campton for Wolf County, also pushing into places in Menifee County and Morgan County as well. Also watching out for a few heavier downpours not too far away from downtown Salyersville and McGoffin County at this hour. And tracking some more light showers close to downtown Hazard and Perry County, moving into not also Floyd counties at this hour. This is all thanks to a pesky upper level low that continues to spin off the northeastern coast, producing some snow showers off the northeast. But notice for us, we're tracking some drier conditions, also some clearing skies back to the north and west, all thanks to high pressure. And that will continue to filter in as we go into tonight, also for most of this weekend. Those temperatures right now are chilly, most of us in the middle to lower 40s and check this out as you wake up in the morning. We are cold, a freeze warning in place for most of us, so be sure to protect those plants as most of us see upper 20s to lower 30s to wake up in the morning, but some 70s are not far away. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Olivia. All right, Cameron, thank you. In the first week since campus reopened after spring break, University of Missouri students gathered to honor the life of late student Riley Strain. The Missouri Delta Chi fraternity hosted a candlelight vigil yesterday. Strain went missing after being escorted out of a downtown Nashville bar on March 8th while on a trip for a fraternity formal. His body was recovered from the Cumberland River in West Nashville two weeks later. Police say no foul play is suspected. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, it's been 30 years since the death of one famous rock star. Plus, we are tracking some drier weather for this weekend. Your first alert forecast coming up.